Listen here, virgins. Glavier's busted. You're probably playing her. Maybe you aren't because you're cringe, but realistically, Glavier is completely fucking unbalanced right now. There's a ton of new Glaviers. There's a bunch of like current present Glaviers who are playing her. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about the build that I am running because she feels jank as fuck to play. And so I want to talk about the changes that I made to the build uh, to make it feel more comfortable. And also after playing it for a little while, I didn't want to make this video like off the rip. I wanted to have like some time like actually playing her and kind of you know, feeling her out a little bit, feeling her out. Uh, things to keep your eyes open for to kind of like maximize your DPS and understand how to like properly use your burst windows, I guess, uh, when you're like rotating through like boss mechanics or through phases of the boss. However, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like the video, sub to the channel if you want to see more stuff that I make, and check me out on Twitch if you're hearing my movies right now. I'm already live, so click the link in the description box. Otherwise, 60,000 years of terrible luck for your family. You will always have diarrhea till the day you're dead, unless you click that link. And join the community Discord. It's full of a bunch of incredible gamers. If you're people to hang out with, chat with, play some video games with, I would highly recommend it. It's very active. It's full of a bunch of cuties like you. Yes, I see you. You're cute. Yeah, you're kind of cute. Oh my god. Oh, you're so cute, man. Let's jump into this video, baby. So for this build, I'm going to be leaving a link to this like page in the description box down below. Uh, I'm not going to go through like every single little thing because you guys can just copy it. And realistically, like the foundation of this comes from Korea, it comes from like Memo's videos and like all the Korean builds on Loa.com or whatever, right? So this is a build you've seen like a thousand times. There's realistically one really good way of building Glavier. I know there's a bunch of other builds, but the meta build is kind of like this. Uh, and so I'm not going to go into like every single small little thing. I just want to talk about the things that are like kind of notable, things that have changed and why I do some certain things. And also things for like comfort to kind of try to make the class feel a little bit more like it used to. Now, just to go over the build really quickly, uh, you're going to be building Entropy, obviously. That's just straightforward. You're an Entropy class now. You're going to be going Spec Crit. I know a long time ago, this version or the version of this build that I used to play, I think I made a video on everything, used to go like uh, Spec Swift with a Crit Ring. Uh, and that was because you needed the Swiftness to be able to obviously optimally back attack. You needed the Swiftness to also activate your Raid Captain. But you wanted to take the damage tripods on your red skills because that's just more damage. And so you had to like this weird fucking Frankenstein build that just didn't really work. That's not the case anymore. They changed Pinnacle, as you guys know. So now you're getting your movement speed and attack speed in both stances. Uh, and so you don't really need the swiftness anymore. You go, you're not as fast as before. Actually, it's about the same. You're a little bit slower, but it's about the same. So you just want to go spec crit on everything. You want to just have as much crit as you possibly can get without actually like inting and taking like, don't take an extra crit accessory. Just go spec crit. And you are Gucci, baby. The engravings are pretty straightforward. Grudge, Curse, Ambush, Raid, and Pinnacle. And then you get Adrenaline 1 or 2, depending if you want to get a plus 1. Or if you have a 9-7, you can get a plus 2. Uh, I don't play it with Adrenaline right now. I don't feel like the crit is, like, super bad or anything. I don't really feel like I'm, like, trolling or anything because we have so much crit coming from our actual stats. Uh, but it, I'm sure it'll be comfortable and, like, more crit is never really, like, a bad thing, right? So that's kind of the just of the base of how you build it, and now I want to kind of jump into the, like, tripods and the ruins and all that stuff. Now to start off with, for the blue skills, I am using Chasing Slash. I know this is, like, supposed to be, like, the meta engraving, but uh, I've tried I, I've tried out using Blade Tornado just because I always preferred Blade Tornado personally, but I would like to make the recommendation for Chasing Slash, even if you're not a big fan of it like I am. It's kind of nice to use just because, I know this sounds like some mega cope, but it's slow. Because it takes so long to actually activate and be used, it's kind of smooths out the build a little bit because you actually have a lot of downtime in your skills now your red skills uh take quite a while to come back off cooldown and so what's going to end up happening is you're going to go through your red rotation you're going to go back into your blue tree and then you're going to go through your blue skills and now you're waiting right like let's say i use all my skills and now i'm just kind of waiting so my red skills are still on cooldown for another couple seconds and so you don't really have anything to do you can throw in like some filler skills that do literally like negative dps it's essentially like auto attacking with extra steps and so I feel like it's kind of smooths it out a lot more when you have the, like that something that just takes up, even if it's an extra second, it makes the build flow a little bit better. And so that's why I've kind of stopped using Blade Tornado. And again, you should be using Chasing Slash anyways. It is technically the higher DPS tripod, but um, I find it always felt like kind of awkward to use. Same with Raging Dragon Slash. You could take Precise if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. Precise Slash sucks fucking 30 inch dick in my opinion. It is super <laughs> like awkward to use. Uh, I just use additional slash. Your Raging Dragon slash should stay pretty much the same. Now, for your Shackling Blue Dragon, things have changed up a little bit. Uh, Shackling used to be, we used to give crit chance to everyone around us, uh, but things change now. So we still give crit chance to ourselves, and it's actually better to, because I think it la well, last same amount of time, but we got an extra 2%. It used to be 18, now it's 20, but it's only for ourselves. Uh, however, our synergy changed. We now give a percent damage buff if you crit. So what happens here is that when you 
when we apply our synergy onto the boss. If somebody lands a crit, they get an 8% damage amp on their crit damage. So it's not straight crit damage, so it becomes multiplicative with that, and it's multiplicative with other synergies. So it's a really, really good synergy. I believe this is the very first of its kind. I don't think there's any other class that has something like this. So it's a really cool synergy, a really sought-after synergy. So you're going to want to make sure you take that out of your tripod tree. After that, blitz like you used to. And then quick prep is very, very important because you need to make sure that your uh, Shackling Blue Dragon and all of your red rotation line up properly. Now let's jump into the red skill. So the first, Sprawling Spear has changed. Uh, we actually put tri like points into this. Uh, you could take your synergy if you want on this, but it's not really needed. You don't kind of, your synergy is pretty much going to always be up for your damage. Uh, there might be some downtime in your synergy now, just because of the fact that like sometimes you're just going to be holding your synergy just to wait for your red skills to come off cooldown, and then you'll do it. Uh, but that only affects everybody else's damage, and who gives a fuck about their damage? Uh, it'll be up for yours, so you're cooking. Okay, dude. <laughs> and so what ends up happening is that the best skill for you to take is going to end up being the uh, Shoulder Slam because it kind of gives a little bit of movement on it, which is kind of nice. Uh, it can, like, move your character to go behind the boss. Something it's, I really, really like it for is it kind of pushes you into the boss. So let's say if you... Uh, did like your your raging dragon uh, your raging dragon horn you did your starfall the boss moves and then you could just like slam yourself into him and then move behind him or however you want to move it I find it's really really comfortable for that so I think it's definitely worth taking shoulders or shoulder slam is the best option for this especially that if you're trying to hit a counter or whatever being able to like fly in with a counter with a super long lasting hitbox is pretty fucking sweet now there's some other changes coming to four headed dragon uh, the first two tripods stay the same you're still taking your vital point and your violent thrust but uh, you're just going to take weak point detection. At the bottom here, this used to be a, uh, a bleed dot, and uh, I think it was quick prep at the bottom. There's still kind of a quick prep sort of one with undefeated, uh, but you just want the extra damage. You're pretty much going to have your Florida Dragon up at all times. You're never going to have trouble like lining this up with anything. It, the cooldown of it is so naturally so short anyways. You're just going to want to take the extra damage on this bad boy. Uh, Thrust of Destruction is also the exact same. You're going to take your attack speed on the first one. You take your weak point detection here, and then you take your air ripping thrust on the last line. Things start to get different around Starfall and Dr Red Dragonhorn. Again, these are just kind of like your just damage tripods. The same thing before, weak, weak uh, point of detection and ground explosion are your highest damage tripods. The thing that's new here on the second tree is actually the extra stagger. Um, I looked here to see if there was anything else that was worth it, but you never really need meter. If I'm going to be honest, like you really never need meter. Um, and this was completely useless because this is just essentially like a vacuum for uh, for like Chaos Dungeon mobs and stuff. So the extra stagger is nice. I'll be honest though, I never use my Starfall for stagger ever, 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 unless it's like, um, I mean, unless I'm literally about to die. And even then, uh, I only will probably use it for like, it'll only be up if like the boss is like one of the bosses that don't take reduced damage for stagger. So something like a Clown G1 uh, or like, let's say even Kyan Glow Gate, uh, Gate 1, which is actually going to be removed anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Uh, but bosses like that, I will use it. But usually I'll just be holding my skills because I am i don't really ever feel like I'm like that tight on like the majority of stagger checks in this game. And either way, like rotating into your reds tree just to use this is like, it feels really fucking bad <laughs> because this is your like second hardest hitting skill in your entire rotation. Now, lastly, red dragon horn also got a little bit of a change. The second and third bar is the exact same thing. You're taking weak point detection for extra damage, you're taking determination again for extra damage. However, we have a reaction speed. This just charges it up faster. It makes the skill feel more smooth. You go through your charge animation faster, and so you have a better guarantee of like getting the damage on the boss, unless the boss just decides to warp a spin and fuck you. Uh, but this is probably the best thing to take, because again, you don't need extra meter, and reduced damage while doing the skill is like super mega ultra fucking useless. So reaction speed is by far the best tripod for this. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the rune setups because there's two ways that you can set up your runes. Uh, as you notice here, on Half Moon Slash and Rage of Dragon Slash, you can run Conviction Judgment. This is pretty nice because if you do like hold your skills and kind of like work it to synergize into your either Awakening or into your Red skills, it can be kind of nice to reduce the cooldown because as I mentioned, a big change with the class right now is that it feels like ass to play. I'm going to be completely honest with you here. Uh, the class is clunky as fuck now. It didn't used to be like that. It was smooth as shit, but now they made it like really, really weird. Uh, so having a Conviction Judgment could help with that. You don't really have mana issues with this class, I'm going to be honest. You don't really need it for that. It really is just for the reduced cooldown when you use your Awakening. Or again, for like your red skills every 30 seconds. Uh, you can run that there. And so if you do decide to do that, you have a lot more Gale Wind runes for your actual red skills if you decide to set it up that way. Uh, what I'm running right now in game, and this is more of the standard Korea build. Uh, like I mentioned before, I have a Purify on my Spiraling Spear because I'm doing a con and so you need, you need Purify runes for that. 
Uh, but if you do decide to not run that, uh, you can then put another quick recharge on your Radiant Dragon Slash. You can put a, uh, a Gale one on your Half Moon Slash because it'll help it go a little bit faster. Because like I mentioned before, Half Moon Slash could be a little bit slow with uh, Chasing Slash. Man, there's a lot of slashes in this class. And then you're still going to pump a bunch of Gale Wins onto all of your uh, onto all of your red skills. I still like to put a Legendary Gale Wind on, uh, on my Red Dragon Horn and on my Starfall Pounce. Uh, just because Starfall Pounce is really, really slow. And in my opinion, I like making sure that my Gale, my Red Dragon Horn gets out because this is like your, this thing does like giga fucking damage. This is like hitting a surge essentially right now. It is very, very, very powerful. Missing this fucking sucks. Now, this is something that kind of ch I changed up a little bit just to make the class feel a little smoother. My gem layout is a bit different than what the uh, Korea build suggests. Uh, pretty much, I run damage and cooldown on all of my red skills. And then I actually do run a cooldown gem on my Shackling Blue Dragon, which in their build, I know they don't. And then I just run only damage gems on my Half Moon and my Raging Dragon Slash. I do not feel like I am missing cooldown doing this. The blue skills are, are like literally always up when I want them. The main thing here that you want to focus on is you want to get big cooldown gems on your Starfall Pounce, your Red Dragon Horn, and your Thrust of Destruction. Uh, it's super, super important to make the class feel a little bit more like it did before. But I do find this gem setup is feels way, way smoother. It still doesn't feel like how old Glavier felt, but it does try to get it a little bit closer where this, the abilities kind of like flow into each other a lot better. Uh, on the subject of gems, you kind of want some bigger cooldown gems if you want the class to not feel like shit. And it's kind of annoying because they kind of have to come as a package. Uh, the prio, I would say, for cooldown gems would be your Red Dragon Horn having a level 9 and your Starfall Pounce having a level 9. When, once you hit the level 9 threshold, the downtime between these two skills, like your, pretty much your entire red rotation going into your blue and then back into your red, it doesn't feel as long. That seems to be like the sweet point where the class feels a lot less janky. It's still going to feel janky. I'm not trying to like make you guys cope and think like, oh, the class is going to be fixed and feel normal. It's different now. It just feels completely different. But it does flow a lot better once you hit that level 9 threshold cooldown gem for your uh, Starfall Pounce and your, and your Red Dragon Horn. The reality is, however, you ideally want to get your Threats of Destruction as well. But I would prio Red Dragon Horn and Starfall Pounce first, just because even though all three of these skills have a 24 second cooldown, usually a boss is going to move, right? So in an ideal situation, you're going to be going into your blue stance, you're going to crit buff, you're going to go into your red. And then you get your Red Dragon Horn, your Starfall Pounce. Starfall Pounce is slow as cock. It, it's had like a double animation on stuff, right? So it, it's super fucking rare. The boss is not going to move. And so usually you're going to have to reposition to land your Thrust of Destruction. So you're not going to really feel the fact that even though they all share the exact same cooldown time, your Thrust never really feels like it's like lagging behind. However, when a boss does stand still or they're like staggered or countered or whatever it is, and if you went directly into it off cooldown, your thrust is going to be a little bit slower. And so what I usually do in that situation is I'll, I'll use my Red Dragon Horn, I'll use my Starfall Pounce, and then I will use my Four-Headed Dragon and then use my Thrust of Destruction afterwards uh, just to make the rotation feel a little smoother, just to get the damage out while the boss is staggered. Because then usually if a boss is staggered, they're going to do some shit to like... They're going to go back into being like toxic as fuck, right? So <laughs> you could do that or you could just give it like the extra second or two to let thrust come off cooldown. But I, if, again, it's not like everyone's just running around with like, like full level 9s or level 10 gems, right? So if you are trying to prio them, I would say prio the Red Dragon Horn cooldown and then the, uh, the Starfall Pounce cooldown first and then go for your Thrust of Destruction as the third. The rest having level 7 cooldowns is completely fine. Uh, for damage gems, obviously, you're going to want to prio your Red Dragon Horn and your Starfall Pounce. Red Dragon Horn is by far your hardest hitting skill. Uh, Red Dragon Horn and Starfall Pounce are two hardest hitting skills. They hit hard as trucks. You want to make sure you prio damage gems on those skills ASAP. Also, on the subject of your actual damage priority, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Your red skills do the most damage. <laughs> your Starfall does like the majority of your damage, just doing probably like 40-ish percent of your damage. Uh, then your Starfall Pounce, and then your Thrust of Destruction, and lastly is going to be your, your Four-Headed Dragon. And then your Blue Stance, your Half Moon Slash does the most in your Blue Stance, and then your uh, Red Dragon, or Raging Dragon Slash does the least amount. So... Obviously, you want to make sure that like these things fucking hit, right? It's super, super important that you want to make sure your highest damage skills are off cooldown and being used on the back and pray to fucking let the crit. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. I think everyone knows that your red skills do the most amount of damage. Now, on that subject, understanding how to use the new uh, like actual like like class meter is really, really important because I feel like when I started playing the class, I kind of was playing it in the old way. And because of the fact that when you swap stances now, you only use one bar it's important to keep track of things like this when bosses are transitioning 
So what do I mean by this? So this is something that I kind of realized while I was doing a con, that I was kind of like stuck in the old way of doing stuff. If I was in red stance, and let's say the boss just got staggered, or the boss just came back from a mechanic, I would still go through my entire blue stance, and then try to get through the red stance. Because that's how it used to work, right? If you were in the wrong stance, you had to rebuild your meter, but that's not how it works anymore. If you have like three things of meter, especially if you're trying to do a stagger check and you're like trying to greed, greed like, you know, kind of like save your skills for after that stagger check, try to just build up meter without using any skills that are important. The reason for this is let's say I'm in red stance and like a boss just finished doing a stagger check, right? And let's say I slowly built up that meter. So let's say I'm in stagger check, I'm gonna go back in. I need to have two bars because I wanna be able to swap back and forth and I wanna be able to awakening, but I'm in red stance and I want awakening in blue stance. It's really, really straightforward, right? So you're gonna do use some skills that maybe are on lower cooldown. You probably wouldn't use your thrust and destruction, but let's say you would spam your forehead dragon, you would hit uh, sprawling a little bit, and now I have my two bars. And so let's say after the boss gets staggered, you swap into your blue. I don't even bother with my blue skills because they don't do a lot of damage. I could just straight up awakening, and then just crit synergy, go into my red skills again, and then do my red rotation. On top of that, even if your awakening isn't up, stuff you can do is let's say I'm in red stance, I'm kind of fucked. I could just swap out of red, crits in, swap back into or sw swap back into red, and then you're doing your damage again, right? It might seem a bit weird, but you kind of have to break out of the old way of playing Glavier where you're like, you don't have to build up that full meter. And so swapping back and forth and just eating a bar of meter doesn't really matter because you build it up really, really fucking easily. Uh, I probably should go over the rotation really quickly, but what I like to do is in my blue stance, I'll use my uh, half moon slash as long as I have meter. I'll use my raging dragon slash. I go into my synergy. I use my raging dragon slash uh, or my raging dragon horn, my starfall pounce, thrust, and then my four headed dragon. And then I just always throw this in. Uh, once I'm back into my blue, there's going to be a good amount of, of cooldowns. Just click buttons, I guess. Once my blue skills are off cooldown, uh, I use my uh, Raging Dragon Slash or my Half Moon Slash or whatever. And then again, you're waiting for your red skills to come up. Something that should be, that's worth doing in my opinion, is that once you go into your red skills, what I like to do is I'll, I'll crits in. And then I will use all of my red skills. And then you just look at what your cooldown, cooldowns are before you leave. So I'm at 12 seconds, I go into blue stance, and I'm at 6 seconds here, right? So I know that pretty much after this comes off cooldown, I have, like, let's say, like, another, like, 6 seconds. You could do it after 5, let's say, because there's animations and moving and positioning and all that crap happening at the same time. But you could think of it as if I, if I have 6 seconds left on my shackling, then I have, like, double the amount of time left on my, blue, on my red stance. So you don't have to always, like, look at these little dots. You can kind of start to feel it out. By just saying, okay, well, this is how long six seconds felt. Let me just give it a little bit more time, and then I'll like crits in, and then swap into my other uh, my other stance. Now, lastly, cuties, before the Rona takes my sinuses, uh, I should mention how the awakening works. So we take the blue awakening uh, now. We don't use the red one anymore. The reason for that is you still want to have your crit synergy up for your uh, awakening, and you also want it up for your red buff because you're not getting crit in your red or, or in your blue tree anymore, right? So, what you're gonna do now? As you, you're going to use your Awakening on the boss. You're going to then use your Synergy right at the end. And then you just go into your Red Rotation. Now, it's a little cursed. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but our Awakening does a lot less damage than it used to. Glacier Awakening used to be like really, really, really fucking juiced. Especially the Red one did a lot of fucking damage. It's not as impressive as it used to be, to be completely honest with you. And so the idea here is you want to try and land on the boss and then crit sin immediately. Uh, you could space bar in to make sure that you land it. Uh, it does feel a little bit scuffed, I'm going to be honest. It always kind of feels like it's this just doesn't want to quite go, but you should be able to get it off like after for like the, from the second tick onwards of damage. Uh, and that's pretty much how you're going to use your Awakening from this point forward. Uh, otherwise, you're stinky. Now, the last thing I want to mention here, if you want to kind of change around how the class feels a bit, you could take some points out of this. Now, obviously, this is going to be a damage loss, but let's say you kind of miss some of the old movement. Honestly, your blue skills don't do a ton of damage. Uh, I wouldn't take out of half moon unless you really wanted to, but you could you could realistically de-level a little bit of your skills just because of the fact that, like, well, honestly, um, they don't... They're not that strong anymore. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Your red skills do a lot, a lot, a lot of fucking damage. So let's say if you bring your Raging Dragon Slash down to 10, uh, you can maybe take some tripods in Flash Kick. Maybe you want the excellent movement. Maybe you missed the the, uh, the movement from your uh, Thorn Jab. Or maybe you missed the extra little bit of movement you had in your Chain Slash, right? If you take Swoop or whatever it is. You could do that as a, like a, a, a creature comfort if you'd like. Obviously, it is going to be less damage, but 
like especially raging dragon slash it's just not like a ton of damage obviously it is but it, it doesn't make up like the largest part of your damage your red skulls are really 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 strong and so even if you de-level it a little bit just to have a little bit of that extra movement if you like using those skills i don't think that's necessarily the worst thing because honestly chain slash without swoop in my opinion feels really really bad so if you do kind of miss that older feeling of glavier you can do that as well gamers thank you very much for hanging out with me today i do hope you enjoyed the video I'm curious to see how you guys feel. How do you guys feel about New Glavier? Because I'm not a really big fan of it. I don't want to seem ungrateful because obviously my class does like broken, unethical gorilla damage now. And I am very grateful for that. But I played Glavier for a long time when she was doing like literally Z. And uh, I just like the way she felt. I like the way she piloted, right? And I don't feel like New Glavier pilots very well. She feels really, really fucking janky to play. Um, and I kind of wish I had the old version back, to be honest. I was still playing Entropy, right? I don't give a fuck about playing Entropy. I've been playing her Entropy since the beginning of time. Hell, I even played this exact build, like, you know, six months ago, right? And it still wasn't jank. It still wasn't jank like it is now, so... Um, I'm curious to see how other Glaviers feel, right? Try to forget the fact that we do, like, the most broken damage in a game. If this class, in, with its current feeling, did the damage that it did before... Would you be happy with it? I'm curious. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm curious to see if other Glaviers feel the same way where it's like you feel like the class kind of got like not gutted, but it feels fucking shit to pilot. I'm going to be honest. It feels super weird. I hate having such long cooldown in her skills. Uh, but let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for taking some time to hang out with me today, guys. I do hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy doing busted damage until we take the 4% nerf in a bit. I don't know when we're getting that. Take it easy. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.